we're having a party. All right, here we go. Wild Unknown. <laughs> I feel so bad. I, I don't like this deck. <laughs> and I really don't like the guidebook. And I'm afraid I'm going to offend people. Um, but here we go. All right, so Joe at least agrees with me that the guidebook is rubbish. Um, but I want to start with the deck. I want to start on some positives and what I do like. So everybody probably knows this deck, unless you just like don't do tarot, which is totally cool. There's a couple of you in here who are either new to tarot or don't do a ton with it. Um, so this deck kind of relaunched tarot in the popular consciousness in the early 2000s. It originally came out as an indie deck and then it got picked up by Urban Outfitters and some other major retailers. And it was on the New York Times bestseller list for months. I think it's the only tarot deck that's ever been on the New York Times bestseller list. Um, Emerald Fern says they don't like the, <laughs> the guidebook for this either. Um, so, okay, well, good. We can agree that that could use some work. Um, I think Kim Kranz as an artist is incredible, right? Like sitting there with her pen and drawing, I mean, look at all these feathers. Look, 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 right? Like. How many hours did it take to draw this owl? And I don't know if she goes back in digitally and like cleans up her work or not, but it doesn't look like it. You know, this just looks like pen and ink from somebody who just sat there. And she even talks about this in the book, like that she, you know, thinks she has ADHD or something like that. And how, you know, sitting here and drawing these things just like helps her be calm and focus in. And I can totally see it. So absolutely no shade to her talent as an artist. I think her work is very beautiful. Um, and I'll show you some tarot cards that I particularly like. Not those. Um, but these are kind of my favorites. I picked out 22 of them. <laughs> um, but they're not all majors. But these are the ones I really liked. And, you know, so I, I enjoy her artwork very much. I think for me, part of the issue with this deck is again the simplicity it's overly simplified um uh christine and i were actually talking about this deck together and, and doing some practice readings and it's almost as if kim has like boiled down um the longer descriptions of some of the cards into a single keyword and drawn that thing and so it's sometimes hard to get much out of the images, at least for me. It's kind of like pulling teeth, you know. I can do it, and I did a couple readings with this, and they weren't awful. They made sense, um, but there's just not a lot to go on. So I can appreciate, again, her artwork, um, but it's hard, and then it, it gets doubly hard if you try to read the book. So basically, the book is sort of a rehash of something like an Eden Gray um, guidebook for the tarot with very specific uh, meanings and things for each card. Um, very sort of cut and dry, no room for interpretation kind of thing. She does say some cool stuff in the beginning about, um, you know, using your imagination and stuff like that. But then she sort of goes into like the, the stereotypical stuff about what each card means. I do like that she talks about, you know, sitting and centering yourself and what kinds of questions to ask. So she has decent advice in the guidebook for how to do a, con a, a cohesive tarot reading. But then her, her imagery is kind of all over the place. Like the Fool card depicts a chick, um, a baby chick. And then she talks about like spontaneity and stuff. And I'm going, mm, no, I read, I raised chickens. Uh, you know, baby chicks aren't spontaneous. They just stick with their mom because they're very vulnerable. And they can get, you know, that's that's lunch for somebody. So I, I have trouble with that. I, I would say also I have trouble a, a little bit with relating to animal decks in general. So that's my problem, not Kim Kranz's problem. But I have a hard time making animal energy make sense in a tarot reading. Uh, construct. So that's that's tricky. I do like her description of the hermit card, so I will read that a little bit. So this is the one with the tortoise with the flame on top, and she says, 
The idea of being a hermit is not supported in our society, but in the realm of tarot, hermits are highly celebrated and valued creatures. Through meditation, solitude, and stillness, they bring wisdom to all. When this card appears, it's time to step back from the business of day-to-day -day life and focus on your inner realm. Be more self-aware. If you're intrigued by meditation, start now. Spend time by yourself. Your inner fire is ready to be lit. It will shine for all to see. So it's not bad. Um, I balk in general at guidebooks that sort of tell you what to do, like do this and do that. And I, I guess that's another in general detractor from this guidebook is that she she does that a lot. Um, and sometimes it's stuff like, you know, t tell your friends to leave you alone or um, like for the Eight of Cups, the message could not be more clear. Nothing good remains for you here. Lift your eyes to the horizon and let your feet lead you forward. Like, I get that maybe that's a metaphor of like a mental state or something, but literally every time the Eight of Cups comes up, you're supposed to like blow up your life and walk away. I don't, I don't think that's very realistic. I was trying to think of a good uh, metaphor for, for this book. And to me, it reads like the people from the Lightseers Tarot wrote it. You know what I mean? Like, they're, like they're all just having a fabulous Instagrammable life and they all get together one night and they're like, oh, let's do a tarot guidebook. And this is kind of what comes out. Um, that, that is kind of how I interpreted this. So for this card, I, I pulled this one up specifically. Uh, it says, um, Eight of Swords trapped and powerless. Surrounded by obstacles and threats on all sides, you find yourself the victim. You see no way out, no available choices. Your perceptions keep you from opening your wings and taking flight. What keeps you suspended here, yourself or others? The Eight of Swords demands an answer. You cannot hang here much longer. But that's not what I see in the image. That's the other thing. Is that it, it seems to be a disconnect between what she's saying and what she's written. Like here I see the power, the power to transform, the power to overcome whatever this threat might be. I see this as a very powerful card and I see that in the Eight of Swords in the RWS too. Um, I see that figure is actually holding a lot of power. They're concentrating, they're almost like a Houdini-like figure. Um, so I think the imagery here is in, in a lot of the cards is nice, but then you look at the guidebook and it's like, huh? <laughs> I don't understand. Yep, I cannot read this deck. <laughs> this is my favorite deck. <laughs> the miners are pip-like. Yeah, I th I'd say all the cards are pip-like. You know, they have a single figure or they just have a few things going on. Um, Vermont Farm Cam likes the monarch. Yep, I thought you would. There is a mini version. I would send this to you if you want it. Uh, I, I, I totally would. Um, yeah. <laughs> email me your address you can have it um the other thing i would say is is that uh and I, i'm sorry i hate to like rip this thing to shreds but i do th find her guidebook book actively problematic when she's talking about the um the court cards in in specific um because it's written in a very sexist way where a lot of the female uh so she has she has daughter, son, mother, father, instead of page, knight, queen, and king, in case you're not familiar with this. So the daughters and the queens um, all seem to have some kind of negative aspects. Not all of the male uh, figures do. And then the cup suit, which is like emotions and seen as very feminine suit, um, they all have problems except for the son, who's like, mysterious you know he, he's okay because he gets to be like the bad boy or something but everybody else is like a pile of emotional mess um and i see that as it's an internalized sexism it's things that are equated with being feminine or female are are undesirable they're problematic they're hysterical um they get in the way they cause confusion all of these kind of stereotypes about you know emotions and femininity so that would probably be my biggest critique of the guidebook, but eh, I don't know. There it is, I guess. That is how I feel about The Wild Unknown. It's definitely not a deck for me. Um, I did do a cool reading uh, with this. And again, this took like some mulling over. Um, I don't know if you can see, I'll hold this up a little bit. So this was just a general, it was like a moon phase, uh, full moon in Leo. That's when we did this. 
And I got, um, let's see, this is the Mother of Wands, Temperance Reverse, the Eight of Wands, the uh, Father of Swords Reversed, and the Five of Wands. So lots of like Wands energy all across here, Father of Swords, and then the Temperance, but both reversed. And this ended up uh, to me speaking to about a work project um, where at first I thought I would have to go in to that situation and be really like bold and kind of laying down my um, opinions about things and making sure that people, you know, were listening to me and all this stuff. And it turns out that that really wasn't necessary. Um, so, you know, we got a good reading out of it. Um, it's not that it, it can't give a good tarot reading, uh, even, even for people who don't quite gel with it. It's just, I guess it just doesn't flow for me. So there you go. I also noticed that I'm turning bright pink and it's because this sweater's a little bit hot and it's also just a tiny bit itchy because I don't have a full undershirt on. So excuse me while I turn like some weird persimmon shade, but that's what's happening right now. Um, Joe says, Carrie Mellon's unofficial guide to the wild unknown is so much better than this book. Oh, well, there you go. Pro tip. Um, Carrie Mellon of the, uh, oh my God, don't tell me, Spacious Tarot, right? Yeah, she, I like, I've read her blog and I like the way she writes about tarot. She's, she's very cool. You know, and I know that other people have, have pointed this out. I mean, this book's been out for, or this, this deck has been out for years. Like, why won't Kim just go back and rewrite it? Um, it's been recommended as like a beginner, a good beginner deck. I disagree with that. Um, I know that not everybody likes the Rider Waite imagery and I don't necessarily think that has to be somebody's first deck but if you get this and you get like a disconnect like with this card you're gonna feel you're gonna feel stupid you're gonna feel like you can't understand the tarot because what's written in the guidebook has nothing to do with the image and I think that's a disservice and then you add things like the sexist uh you know text on top of that and it's it's kind of a mess um it's kind of a mess so anyway um but it is well loved and a lot of people love it um you know and use it a lot and I've seen people I've seen other people like on Instagram or in lives um, use this deck and give really good readings. So, you know, take every, take all of my criticism, well, take 80% of my criticism as just Sarah's opinion. I'll, I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, phew. Okay. I got through that review. That wasn't too awful. I was kind of dreading doing that because I don't, I don't like to be critical for the sake of critical. Um, and I like to be articulate about why I'm criticizing something if I have critique on it. So 